Thank you very much, Ryan, and, and good evening and welcome to our, our special uh, webinar tonight. We're going to be discussing really the, the, the top benefits you can get as, as a member. And, and joining me tonight, I actually have a very special guest. Um, um, he's, a, he's someone who's been working, uh, one of our hidden stars. He's been working here at the association now for, for I think, nearly 15 years. And uh, he uh, handles uh, really a lot of the technology and has handled a lot of technology that we do in the past. And, and now he's in charge of, of bringing us our, our website features and also head of marketing. Uh, Pete, please welcome. Hi, John. Glad to be your tag team partner tonight. Very excited. Thanks for the invite. Uh, but yeah, just let me just introduce myself really quickly. Uh, so I, I had a background in technology here. I, I had a passion for connecting with our members to deliver solutions that would enrich their educational experience. And then, you know, now as, as the director of marketing and specifically in the role of the manager of our website, I enjoy an even deeper bond with our member getting into the minds of individual investors and what they value, what they care about. And then, you know, using that feedback from our relationship to build a website that solves their problems. So it's an, it's an honor to play an active role in, in making AAI.com an important part of their investing journey. And I, I really would welcome any feedback that our members would have for us tonight. I, I always preach continuous improvement within our development teams. And, you know, so anything you can tell us that would make us uh, create a better product, we'd appreciate that. Well, that's great. And then in terms of tonight, our, our goal, I, I think what our, our, we're going to basically maybe go you know, take turns describing some of the best uh, benefits that we have on our uh, as a member, as you get as a member. Uh, any any tips? I mean, we should provide before we get started. Yeah, I, I would say the, the the most important thing about going to our to our website and, and enjoying the content is, is you just got to hop around and click around and to make the most out of tonight's presentation. You know, I I, I would actually have the website open and as you're listening um, and experiencing what we're sharing with you. You know, just go ahead and try it yourself. And it, you know, again, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, send it over to us. Yeah. So then, what's going to happen is, is Ryan will be watching the the questions panel on the GoToWebinar, and he'll be uh, chiming in occasionally if any questions come up that uh, we can help answer. And also, uh, I'll call out. I'm going to call out to Gene. Uh, Gene uh, is associate uh, in charge of all of uh, the publications we do at the association, and and she's normally our 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 bibliographer at these webinars, and she's probably quite at home right now, got her pen and pad out ready. And uh, tomorrow, we are recording this session, and tomorrow we're gonna send out an email and we're gonna have a, a show notes section. So anything we mentioned that goes beyond uh, our handouts tonight and any kind of resources we mentioned, uh, she'll, we'll, she'll go ahead and compile that information and then you'll get, as, as that, you'll get resources that are mentioned that go beyond what's in here in the webinar. So with that, um, I'm going to get started, I guess, with the first first segment. And really, um, the one of the core elements that we were looking at at membership, you know, Charles and I uh, were were trying to figure out how do we explain all the different features that you as a member have access to. And, and it kind of came the first question, I guess, that really came out of it was that really, you know, whether you're a beginning investor or you've been investing for many years and you're seasoned and you're at retirement point, um, really. No matter what, it's very important to first have some sort of system in place that helps define where you are as an investor, your needs, your 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 strategy, your style, and really before you can start even picking you know funds or ETFs, even if you have them or decide if they're right for you, you really kind of have a strategy in place. And mm -hmm. you know, really, it's been shown that really if you have a, a system in place, you're going to do better. And you know, Jim's rule when it came to investing success was first develop a consistent, well-defined approach to investing. Rule number two, stick to rule number one. So with that in mind, uh, Charles, for the last year, has been working in, if you've been following uh, the journal, if you've been looking at our website, we've done a, a number of webinars, we've really been defining what we call the individual investor wealth building process. And our goal here is it's to break it down into steps. So again, you know, my daughter just finished college last year. She's, she's starting in her career. She's looking at how to build her, uh, you know, what to do with her retirement assets. I helped set her up to this particular approach. So the first thing is to define a goal, pick an appropriate allocation, identify if you're going to be doing it really actively or not, select investments and monitor. It's an iterative process. And so as a member of the association, A, you're going to be getting articles and have been getting articles and worksheets on a regular basis in the, in the journal. But also, we've developed a special section on our website called Learn and Plan. 
And in here, we've taken all of these resources, we've taken those, those, those five major steps that are part of the wealth building process and created a series of challenges. There's about a dozen challenges that really help step you through the process, help walk you through what's going on here. We have videos there, we have uh, worksheets uh, and information as far as uh, online classes. So your best bet to get started in this arena is to log on to AAI.com and click on the Learn and Plan tab and start taking the challenges. Learn about the process and follow it. And I, you know, whether again, you're, you're seasoned or if you're getting started, there's something in here for you and it'll help give you some sort of overall guide path to follow through. Uh, Pete, any questions about this? Uh, I, I was just wondering from um, from your perspective, John, you know, someone who is not at a, you know, the, um, a certain level or certain uh, level in the, uh, the process, if they're just entering in um, halfway through, how would you suggest that they take on this wealth building process? Well, even if you're halfway through, uh, again, the, the, wealth, the wealth building process is, 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 first of all, I think it's, even if you've been investing for a long time, uh, it, it makes sense to go ahead and just look through where you are and your life cycle. So, you know, if you establish your investing goals, that'll give you a sense for, yes, I'm planning for retirement or I'm planning to have an estate left over for my, for, for my heirs afterwards. So even if you have an established investment, get that first overall plan figured out. Then you could look at the asset allocations and see how your asset allocations are appropriate for you. And then you could decide, you know, okay, here are my current holdings. How do they fit as far as my planned asset allocation? And, you know, do I want to take an active role? Perhaps I just simply want to invest in index funds. That's fine. Just have an allocation, have a plan. But really, you know, you need some sort of, of, of framework to keep you guided because the, the, the worst thing you could do is, is, is really um, jump uh, you know, or panic when the market has any kind of distress. And, you know, one of the benefits that we found with, with, with being an educated investor is you learn that there are, are points in time where you'll be stressed in the marketplace. I mean, we, this last year, I mean, 2020 was quite a year. I mean, we had uh, one of the most shortest, most severe uh, bear markets, followed by one of the strongest bull markets uh, in, in, in one short year. And if you were uncomfortable with allocation at the, you know, March of last year, uh, perhaps you need to adjust your, your risk pro profile. But I would, again, just, it's not going to take long. Go through the 12 challenges, even if you're halfway through your program, and see if what you're doing really fits with, with your style. Uh, we did have a question that just came in um, from uh, Kathleen. They asked, uh, where, where is the Learn and Plan tab? I um, mean, I think you're, you're seeing it on your screen there. It's in our navigation bar, uh, right between right. Uh, screening and community. Now, the one thing that might be worth mentioning is that our, our site is responsive, so it's quite possible if your screen is a little bit more narrow or if you're looking at the site on a phone, what's going to happen is these sites will sort of uh, compress and it'll become a drop down menu. But it should still be called learn and plan and it should be roughly, you know, the seventh item or so over. With that, Thank you. Pete, I'm going to turn it over to you. Sure. Well, the and we're talking about my portfolio, the best way to monitor your growth as an investor is to put your education to work by tracking your investments through AI.com's My Portfolio tool. You know, some people use uh, desktop apps like Quicken. Some people use, uh, their, you know, they're more DIY. They want to use spreadsheets. Others choose to use great online portfolio trackers out there. But truly, what makes the AI My Portfolio such an important tool is that it integrates into our website. You know, many of you have joined the association because you were looking for a financial peace of mind. And the wealth building process that John had described just now is that you know, it's a discipline, it's an overall system that allows you to construct your plan and thoughtfully make investing, investing decisions. You know, the monthly journal um, and, and other edu education that we offer fuels your mind with strategies and, and techniques. But it's my portfolio that extends your education and puts it into action. So recall that on that flow chart that John showed earlier, that, that step five of the wealth building plan is monitor. Well, that's where my portfolio comes into play. So it, it'll help you, uh, if John, if you could advance the, 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 uh, the slide. It, it'll help you make smarter investing decisions. It'll help you 
better manage your asset allocation and, and give you an investment checkup, if you will. Um, it'll easily identify your investing needs. And so we feel that a synergy between the things that we are teaching you is so necessary to be successful. And, and that's really the, the best way that you can get most out of your education. Now, when you're on step two of the wealth building process, which is uh, you know pick an, an appropriate allocation, yes, you'll create a proper framework for achieving your financial goals, but it's through the diversification analyzer tool on my portfolio that it truly increases the odds that you're gonna stick to your plan, narrow your focus, identify when to make portfolio adjustments, and ultimately create a portfolio that's tailored to your financial and psychological tolerances for risk. So, you know, as you can see from the chart there, the, the diversification analyzer produces these beautiful charts that allow you to see how your current al allocation stacks up with your goals. It gives you comparisons to the asset allocation models that is defined by your investing type. And it'll also give you a breakdown on sector size and geographical diversification. Another example of, of integration, you know, some of you out there may be aware that AI's five special quant grades, and these are grades that were developed and vetted by AI's research team. We, we send out these weekly Wednesday stock ideas emails. And when you read these, these, these articles about our stock ideas, which covers a stock in its grades, what you're gonna find are, are these grades that, that will, you can follow through all the way. And so when you study these grades through our screening tools or ticker evaluator pages, these all flow into the My Portfolio tool for further monitoring through the grades tab. And that's the, the image that you see there on the, on the left. So that, that tab allows you to monitor for grade changes that may happen. Uh, you, you may have also noticed that throughout our website, on, on most of our tables that contain lists of stocks and funds and ETFs, there's a you know a little plus button next to them. And by clicking on that plus button, you'll get to add tickers to your portfolio watch list. So this is, this is important because it, it makes investment discovery and research so much easier when you can quickly add tickers for additional study. So I think as a member, having that one-stop shop experience where everything is cohesive and flows together is so critical to growing as an investor and reaching for your uh, financial goals. Now, my portfolio, my portfolio has all the critical features that you'd expect out of a portfolio tracker. You can track your holdings. You can look at your gain loss since purchase. It's got data on, on basic fundamentals. You can write notes about your holdings. But really, the, the last feature, if, if you can advance the slide, John, the last really nice feature that I want to discuss is the Insights tab. You know, this tab produces a quick summary of, of, of anything that is notable about your portfolio. It tells you how many stocks have grades of B or better. It indicates anything notable about mutual funds or ETFs that you follow. For example, it may tell you helpful things like the number of funds that have a lower expense ratio than normal, than normal within its category. Um, but one of the most powerful features, I think, within that tab is the ability to match tickers in your portfolio to the 50 plus stock screens in our library. So that, you know, that allows you to do further research on new stock screens that you may not have heard of. And then it may open the door to other stocks that, you, that weren't on your radar, you know, with grades that are more attractive than the stocks that you're currently monitoring and so on and so forth. So like I said, synergy and integration is paramount to an optimal educational experience. It's why we invested a lot of energy to, to align our benefits to meet your needs. Um, finally, you can you can access the My Portfolio through the button on the top left of the website. So that's 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 the image on the right side that you see there on your screen. We put it on the left corner because research showed us that the best the first place that members look at when they're using our website is is that area, and we believe that's, that this tool needs to be the center of your universe, and and we feel that's very helpful um, when it's when it's so easily accessible. That's very helpful, uh, Pete. And uh, in terms of the questions that are coming up that I see, you know, people are asking, can they combine, you know, stocks and funds in a given portfolio? Oh, absolutely. The, the portfolio uh, covers uh, stocks, funds, uh, mutual funds and ETFs. Um, yes. So we, we do have that in our universe and you, and you can add that to your portfolio. And uh, one one other question, I guess, is is this portfolio tool integrated with anything like a stockbroker's uh, website? It is currently not. That is feedback that we have heard a lot, and and it's it's uh, on our our wish list to uh, to uh, um, add that. Um, you know where that is exactly on our roadmap. Um, you know I can't share that at this moment, but you know we work with Wayne Thorpe, the uh, the product manager of A Plus Investor, who also um, 
uh, is the the uh, the brains behind the my portfolio tracker. And so, you know, this is val valuable feedback that we hear a lot that that we'll have to consider about um, the next enhancements to the my portfolio. And and one last question before we move on is one of security. I see a question or two being raised by security. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, how can you know how do, how do we uh, what kind of systems are in place? So what kind of uh, protocols are in place to help uh, preserve information? Well, uh, you know, that, that's that's probably a question best answered by our uh, director of IT, Nick Powell. But, but, you know, everyone that knows Nick around AI knows that, you know, uh, the most important thing that he values is security. And so he, he places a, a huge emphasis on making sure that all of our data is secure and they're in servers that, that cannot be uh, breached or, or are very difficult to breach. Um, and that the, the data that, that we are holding, um, which contains, you know, information about someone's uh, uh, finances is, 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 uh, is taken care of in a, in a way that, um, you know, a, a hacker can come in there and, and, uh, and get that information. I've heard we also try to uh, anonymize stuff. We try to keep a little information out in the public as well. So uh, most of the stuff is, 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 is cloud based. And like you said, uh, we're doing a lot of work as far as trying to, you know, when you're looking at our website, it's all done through a secure layer. Uh, so it's encrypted going back and forth as well. Just one other uh, point of information that came up. Uh, how many portfolios can a uh, user have with the My Portfolio tool? Uh, it's currently 25 portfolios. Great, thank you. Well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to our, our next, one of our next most popular member benefits, and that's the model shadow stock portfolio. And it was been developed, you know, over 25 years ago now. And it was, you know, from, from our from our start, uh, you know, whether it was uh, Jim Clunan, our founder, or past presidents such as John Marquise, we've always tried to take a look at how can we take uh, information that's been developed in the academic world, and how do we make it applicable to the individual investor? And uh, so, you know, Jim started the shadow stock portfolio. He was looking at the research that was out there and he was trying to find out, well, the research is showing that long-term, if you are investing in micro cap stocks, uh, they tend to do better than large cap stocks. And, and, and the intersection of, of micro cap and value has done really well as, as well. And, you know, is it possible uh, to build a portfolio that you could follow easily? In fact, he was looking for like just a, a quarterly review of this portfolio and can you build such a portfolio that would be diversified and would actually try to take advantage of what that research shows and that's what the that's what the model shadow stock portfolio was and you know really i think the big appeal with the shadow stock portfolio and with individual investors is that you're taking positions in micro cap stocks um, and you're able to take those positions and have them meaningfully part of your portfolio but most large investors can't do that. Uh, so we could invest in small cap stocks. We could move in and out of them more frequently if we want to. And we could go ahead and, and, and not worry about, you know, handle the, the, the transaction costs and the tax lot adjustments and whatnot. We could take a, a long-term position. You know, now we would have, would have to worry about potentially, I mean, when you invest in micro caps, they do sometimes go through periods of underperformance and outperformance. We had a a long streak of underperformance, but now they've done very well recently. So really, it's meant to be kind of an example of how you as an investor can build a diversified portfolio and follow it using very simple quantitative rules. And we track these things regularly in the AI journal, but also on our website, we have a model portfolios tab. And in there, the AI model shadow stock portfolio is prominently mentioned. So if you click on that, you get access to the model portfolio. This is the actual page or the part of our website in which the, the shadow stock uh, portfolio is presented. And, you know, we do commentary. I do commentary on this uh, once a month. We talk about any kind of market news, news on what's happening in the companies, any kind of interesting research tidbits that might have occurred with the shadow stock portfolio or large caps or small caps. Last year, as an example, we noted that uh, small caps were particularly cheap relative to large caps, and they've narrowed a bit as they've come back up. But really, this is a, a way to kind of get a sense for how the shadow stocks are performing and how you can invest in a very systematic approach. Now, you either follow the model shadow stock portfolio directly, or you could take a look at the shadow stock ideas. 
uh, and, and build your own portfolio using the rules that are in there. So a lot of our members build their own, they follow it directly. So it cuts both ways as far as that is being concerned. Um, so that's really, in, in a nutshell, um, our, our goal is to really you know, give you a, a technique you can follow that matches up with the strength of you being an individual investor, that you could take a long-term perspective on the marketplace. You could invest in segments of the marketplace that readily cannot be followed by other institutions, which is why it's called shadow stocks, just stocks that are in the shadow of Wall Street. And again, you have to take a long-term perspective though. This is not a, a trading portfolio. In fact, you know the rules are, are applied quarterly because when it comes to investing in these small company stocks, you really can't trade them, you have to invest them. Uh, so it's, it's important not because you'll, you'll basically, the spreads will, will in effect eat many of your profits away. John, this, this question came in um, because uh, longtime followers of the association know that Jim Clunan, uh, was our founder, was uh, behind both the shadow stock portfolio and also the level three, um, the book that he, he wrote. Uh, the question is, how does the shadow stock portfolio fit into the level three approach? Sure. Well, a level three approach, I guess, is a, is, is, is a broader view of how one uh, goes, apart, goes apart and, and about and tries to um, invest for the long term. And what the level three approach tries to do is, is, is A, understand that you know, there's, there's, there's different kinds of risk. Uh, and too often in the marketplace, we're talking about volatility, meaning the short term volatility, but the real risk and that's called phantom risk. The real risk is, is not being uh, aggressive enough in your investing portfolio as far as stocks, uh, not taking a long-term perspective, and not really meet you, meet, meeting your long-term investment goals because you've not really optimized your portfolio. So the, the level three approach is, is in effect trying to take a long-term perspective in investing and using different kinds of, of investing instruments the shadow stock could be one if you want to be actively investing and picking individual stocks. But beyond the shadow stock, you know, indexing is a great way to build long-term wealth. But uh, as Jim points out in the Level Three book, uh, you know, some indexes such as the S&P 500 are market cap weighted, and it, there's great concentrations that occur with just a few of the stocks in that index. So you may be better off as an investor, and historically. If you invest in a broader range of securities, if you want to invest in large companies, perhaps uh, a investing in something like the equally weighted S&P 500 might be the way to go. So the level three talks about all those approaches as well as how to potentially pull money out of your portfolio in retirement. And the shadow stock is just one approach that can be used for someone who wants to take the time and effort to manage an individual stock portfolio. But you could certainly follow the level three approach and use index funds as well. Um, an additional question about the shadow stocks portfolio. Um, you know, what what diversification is in this portfolio? Is there is there more than one? Is it um, conservative versus aggressive? If you could maybe give us a little bit of color sure. on that. Well, um, in terms of the scale of things, what you're going to find with the shadow stock portfolio is it's going to be more volatile day to day than say the overall marketplace. Uh, we are excluding financials as far as the types of securities that are in there. So what you're going to have is primarily domestic uh, companies that are across a range of, of, of industries, but uh, it will be, in terms of overall allocation, a little bit more volatile day to day than, say, the S&P 500. So it actually would be a complement if you are looking to, to get a, a mix of, of assets across large cap, mid cap, small cap. The shadow stock would be a complement on the small cap, micro cap part of your domestic equity portfolio. John, I see a question here. Uh, uh, Andrew is asking, can we have live email updates of when AI buy or sell stocks in the shadow stock portfolio? We do. Uh, if you actually, we have a piece at the end that talks about email alerts. So we do send out alerts um, on the, typically on the day a transaction is made. Uh, but by the same token, the rules that we have in the model shadow stock portfolio are very transparent. Uh, there is there really is no judgment or very little judgment that's made along the way. So we have many of our investors just go ahead and pick the follow the rules. The, the, every day we provide the shadow stock ideas on here. 
and the rules for when we sell and buy are, are transparent. So many of our members just go ahead and, and do it on their own, and they'll, they'll probably have you know, close to the same portfolio as we do, if not the, the same. So we do, if you subscribe, and we'll talk about you know, email newsletters at the end, I'll give you information on how to make sure you get uh, shadow stock alerts so that the day of any kind of change, you get an email alert uh, letting you know that a change has been made. Um, and then uh, last question on this, and then we'll, we'll move on. Um, uh, this person asks, uh, how do I begin investing in the shadow stock portfolio? Um, I guess maybe just a little bit of guidance. Um, do we buy the recently added stocks and add as new stocks are added? Um, is there a minimum investment level um, to get started? Well, uh, the rule of thumb, if, if, again, it depends if you have how else your portfolio is diversif diversified. But normally speaking, you know, as an investor, you want to have at least 10, uh, 15 stocks in your portfolio to have a little bit of, of, of to get rid of what's called company risk or a risk that can't be diversified. So you'd want to shoot to have at least, say, 15 stocks or, or all 30. Of course, nowadays, with commissions being so low, it's easy to go ahead and, and buy small positions. Uh, I would typically go ahead and avoid any stocks that are on probation uh, on the on the actual news. We, we mentioned if a stock is on earnings probation or if it's getting expensive. I would normally go ahead and, and look for stocks that are uh, either currently qualifying, have a relatively low price to book, have relatively low market cap, and aren't on probation, and uh, try to you know get 10, 15 of those. So with with that, I'm going to go ahead and and pass it over to you, Pete, and you're going to talk about the journal. Sure. Well, the, the AI journal is is usually the first benefit that people think of. Um, it's very cl closely associated with our with our uh, our, our uh, organization uh, for great reason. You know, it's it's a prestigious monthly print and an online publication that provides practical information and how-to articles on investing for individuals. And you know, not only is it beautiful to look at. It contains beautiful tables and interesting infographics, but you know what I've always found impressive and and what I've admired about um, you know the, the staff at AI, the writers that we have here, is that you know we take very complicated concepts and we make them easy to understand. You know, when I was younger, I used to read and watch Carl Sagan. Uh, he wrote the book Cosmos. He had a TV show. And I guess today's uh, Gen Z analog uh, might be Neil deGrasse Tyson. What these guys had a gift for doing was breaking it down for you and removing the daunting and, and intimidating lingo. And you, well, you know, at the, at the risk of, of hyperbole, Charles Ropla, the, the editor of the AI Journal, is my Carl Sagan of investing. You know, I think his cover articles and editor's notes are a must read. They're rich with his personal investment wisdom and they really take the reader through the educational topic very carefully and thoughtfully. Um, you know, I called out Charles, but you know, there have been numerous great contributors over the years. You know, we've had, uh, Christine Benz write for us, Sam Sol Solval, James O'Shaughnessy, Terry Sh Savage, Paul Merriman. Um, you know, with the journal, you get a continuing stream of insights and ideas. You get access to financial experts and special investing guides. And it, it really helps individual investors learn how to better manage their portfolios, build sound investment strategies, and navigate all the types of financial conditions. The journal is delivered once a month through an email. Or if you get the print edition, it's it's through uh, um, mail, um, and we give you the ability to download the complete issue as a PDF for your convenience. Um, and so, as as John um, has, as, as he moved it to the next slide, um, you know, there's a download this issue link there on your screen that you can see how you can easily get that entire issue right there um, on your your device. And now, I noticed you had yep. the check out the best of part of the journal, Pete. What's what's that about? Yeah, you know, it's 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 also located on, on on that page on the on the right corner. You know, these articles are are hand selected by Charles and very interesting to look at. You know, I always look forward to when Bill Gates releases his five book recommendations every summer and winter, you know, because I'm a tech guy and I, I'm interested in what's on his mind. And you know, it allows me to challenge myself and read things that I might not have otherwise. And so I think the best of collection is that Charles does really works the same way with our readers. Um, and he and he update, updates this uh, once a year. So I, I see that as being our hidden gem that you, you've really got to check out and make sure that you read. Um, and we, have, we've also got, oh, go ahead, John. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Pete. Yeah, we, we've also got you know a rich online archive of articles that go back to 1996, and they cover topics like stock selection strategies, mutual funds, ETFs, bonds, portfolio strategies, financial planning, behavioral finance, 
uh, and retirement investing. In terms of these topic archives here, I have a, a question I guess that came across here is, you know, do we still have uh, computerized investing published? And I, I guess the way to answer that is we've really rolled the computerized investing into the AI journal itself. So uh, we, on a regular basis, I think three, four times a year, we'll publish a computerized investing feature uh, that's tied to the journal. Uh, we did have one one question uh, come in. He says, uh, I'm a new member. Uh, what services are subject to additional fees? Uh, for example, is the, the journal email notice alerts, um, you know, and, and what are the charges? I believe uh, the, the journal and, and most of the member affiliates we're talking about are, are free to all members. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, our goal here is to focus in on the member benefits. So if it's the, the portfolio tracker, if it's the model shadow stock portfolio, if it's the journal itself, uh, even the stock screens we're going to talk about in a moment, uh, these are all benefits. And we even have a breakdown on some of the slides. If something is extra cost, we try to break it out that it is available as an extra cost. But really, as part of your membership, we try to make it uh, as not only educational as far as educational content, but also we try to provide uh, quite a bit of uh, online research that's available in e-newsletters as well. Well, seeing no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the uh, the stock screens. And um, this is uh, one of our our our, our most, uh, I guess we'll call it the popular features with our members. Um, and it grew up many years ago. I mean, I, I I've been at the association now, um, you know, for for 30 plus years. And um, from the beginning, uh, we've been using uh, really computerized techniques or tools to try to come up with some sort of quantitative filter that takes the universe of, of stocks and based upon your own system of investing, uh, break, you know, narrows it down to a smaller subset that you either, either invest in directly or, or do further research on. In fact, the shadow stock is really an example of taking some sort of screen, quantitative screen and breaking it down. And then uh, about you know, 25 years ago, uh, we started to take a look at, well, we built this tool, Stock Investor Pro, and we thought, uh, well, it'd be interesting to actually look at what other gurus are doing or, or to look at specific uh, techniques that are out there and, you know, come up with these predefined filters and screens and talk about them initially. Back then, I was talking about them in the journal. Uh, we used to actually publish a, 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 a printed uh, guide of past articles in the journal. Uh, but then as the website became active, we started putting these stock screens online, uh, giving people, my members, access to the full history of, of the research behind it and whatnot, and also tracking the performance using a monthly hypothetical portfolio. So as a member to the association, uh, you have access to the, our, our, our performance tracking of these guru and factor screens. You could take a look at the results every month that pass. Uh, you could rank them and sort them different ways. You can save these screens. If there's a screen that you come across and you like, go ahead and save it. And there's a My Screen section. So anytime you go online, you can see which stocks currently pass that particular filter. And I'll talk about a couple other benefits later on as far as special power rankings and, and things like that. Even a weekly email uh, that uh, goes out that talks about uh, a, a screen that's interesting or perhaps some stocks that have passed a parameter that looks like a, a, a topical parameter to look at right now. And so that's what you get as a member. And uh, as, as was asked before, you know, what do members get? Well, the only thing that I guess that you can go beyond that if you wanted to um, get access to daily lists of passing screens, you would become an A plus, a platinum or a Stock Investor Pro subscriber. And if you wanted to get in-depth uh, stock evaluations that go into great depth on the stock grades and the stock grade screener, you would need the A plus investor. Other than that, as a member, you get access to all of our screens and analyses. And so you access the screens by going to aa.com, logging in, and clicking on the screening tab that's here. And what happens then is you have access to uh, you know, my screens that are saved. You can take a look at um, not only stock screens, also ETF and fund screens, but really get access to all of these different predefined screens that are out there. And one of the things I like to look at, or personally, what I love when I follow these types of things is I normally go to the all screens section. So if you click on the drop down screening tab 
and explore all screens, you get a list of all of the, you know, the, the 60 or so strategies that are out there. You can, in fact, even from there, you can get a downloadable spreadsheet. But from here, you can take a look at the different screens. Uh, you can rank them. In this case, this happens to be ranked, I think, by 10-year uh, performance. Uh, in this case, the O'Neill Canslem screen is, is done very well. If you put a little star next to it, that means you're favoriting that screen and it gets saved to your collection of screens. And if you go ahead and click, were to click on one of these underlying links here, it would take you to that particular screen. You could take a look at, at the financial theory behind the approach, the various quality factors that are used to screen, as well as a list of passing companies. So the off screens thing is where I often go to, but if you want to be more specific, you can take a look at how the risk return performs and whatnot. So one of the hidden gems, I guess it's, it's perhaps pretty visible, but is the, um, the screen power rankings. And what this does is it allows you to very quickly uh, go ahead and, and, and either look at all the screens, the guru screens or the factor screens. And okay, I wanna see which are the best performing screens of all time. I wanna take a look at um, which ones are best on a risk adjusted basis. It quickly gives you the top five stocks that pass or you can look at all of them. And um, again, it's a quick and dirty way to go ahead and, and see which screens have done well. But I think the most important part in the whole process is really making sure that you know, it's a strategy that you believe in. And when you go ahead and then look at a passing approach, and Pete talked about the notion of occasionally seeing these yellow plus signs next to a company. In this case, these are companies that have passed the Lakanashak screen uh, as of uh, yesterday. And uh, these are ranked, uh, I believe they're probably ranked on a relative strength, 13 week relative strength. If you click on this little yellow plus sign next to a company's ticker, a prompt will come up to add it to a portfolio of yours or build a new portfolio. You then track that one stock over time and make a watch list item out of it or look at the various uh, different co factors that make up that particular particular stock in its portfolio. John, any, uh, can you tell any us, questions? Yeah, John, can you tell us how one would, uh, you know, you, you see this list of stock screens on our website. How would one get started on, on learning a, about a screen and, and how that strategy works? Yeah, well, first of all, um, I would, and Pete's gonna mention this later, one of all of these webinars we're doing here are recorded. And uh, about a month ago, I did a uh, in-depth look at the screens that we do and how do one goes and follows that. So if this really interests you, if screening interests you, I'd recommend uh, going ahead and, and looking at that, going back to that, that particular webinar and, and look at the stock screening webinar that I did. But in general, uh, my approach is to really understand, A, your perspective, your philosophy of investing. Are, are you a value investor? Do you like to uh, you know, buy stocks that are perhaps out of favor but and selling cheaply? Or are you really focused in on things like price momentum? Are you looking at buying stocks that are moving? So all of our screens have, uh, we rate them or we mentioned, are they driven by things like value? Are they driven by growth? Are they driven by price momentum? Earnings surprise. So it comes up with first defining what your approach to investing is, because understand a momentum approach is gonna be more volatile. It's gonna take more closely monitoring. It's gonna have more turnover. Are you, do you have the time and effort to go ahead and do that? If you do, there are some great momentum-based strategies that we have. The wheel Manil canceling approach is one example of that. Uh, if you are more of a, of a uh, I want to buy, you know, deep discount stocks, perhaps you're more of a, a Warren Buffett or a Benjamin Graham investor. We have screens that follow that as well. So if you go back to that um, area that talks about the, the guru screens or value screens, the characteristics tab in general, I'm going to go back here. This characteristics tab will tell you, uh, Again, is it value, growth, momentum focused, as well as what kind of the PE ratios are of the different different stocks that pass? What's have they had or positive earnings surprises and things like that? And I would add, John, that you know, you know, if you go back to this slide with the the Conishock, uh, passing companies, if, if you had scrolled down on the page, uh, uh, um, you you would also find the the screen overview. So it's it's a description of of uh, what led to. Um, our interpretation of, of how that screen is created, as well as the screen criteria. That's very true. Yeah. We, we're very focused on the education part. In fact, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, 
whether it's you know a screen developed by me or, or one of our other analysts i mean we take you know a great joy of learning about these approaches and you know teaching them to our members so uh it's the lacana shack model this happened this model i believe was developed by uh by wayne thorpe uh quite a few years ago based upon the teachings of the lacana shack and uh, it combines uh a it's a value approach that has some price momentum and you can find out you know a what was our source for this screen how do we come up with the quantitative factors and, and our interpretation of it and the exact rules we use for those screens. Uh, this question comes in from Mike. Uh, they ask, uh, how often are these screens updated? Well, it depends upon your level, I guess, and that's the content. If you're a member, uh, the resulting screens, the passing company information is updated once a month. If you're an A-plus subscriber, uh, a Platinum subscriber, or a Stock Investor Pro subscriber daily. Um, and then uh, this, this question comes in from Andrew. Uh, they ask, uh, can we modify these screens with additional criteria, perhaps some one of our own? Uh, it's a good question. We Right now, these are our static predefined screens. If you're a Stock Investor Pro subscriber, we actually have software that comes with that subscription. You can go ahead and um, make changes and make them on your own. Uh, separately, uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're kind of close to finishing, uh, putting in the finishing touches that hope to launch in middle of next year, We're looking at building a, a web-based stock screener as well. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Pete, who's gonna talk about another great member benefit, namely the tax guide. Well, uh, you know, earlier when I mentioned the journal, uh, I, I believe I mentioned investing guides, and what these things are, they're, they're exclusive articles that are run uh, at certain times of the year. So the, the tax guide is is uh, released every December. You know, tax planning should be an essential part of, of any individual investor's financial plan. You know, by reducing your tax liability, you maximize your ability to contribute to your retirement plan. And as we all know, if, if you don't consider the tax implications of a big financial decision, you could end up wasting a lot of money. The thing is, tax laws are complicated. They're confusing, ever-changing. To, so to, to gain an advantage, you really have to stay on top of it. And even then there's a lot of information to take in. So, you know, every year in December, when we release our annual tax guide, you know, we, we, we write it in a way that it's geared towards the individual investor uh, and it covers the latest tax rules, deductions, credits. It's organized in a way that's easy to read. Um, you know, Charles Ropla always tells our members though, you know, if you have any specific questions about how the tax code affects you personally, consult a tax professional, but, to stay abreast and informed, check out the tax guide by going to the, the journal tab on our website and clicking on the investor guides link. With the tax guide, you'll get tax rules for the current and next year, year-end planning tips, investing strategies. You get easy to read tables summarizing tax rates, benefits, phase outs. Uh, it's updated online throughout the year as new rules came out. Come out. Uh, for example, you know the, the 2020 tax filing extension. Um, you know, we also offer the tax forecasting worksheet and, you know, that that's uh, downloadable to fill out and you can save that as well on your own device. Um, and as an online supplement, we offer the, the tax calendar as well as the guide to tax on personal investments. And, you know, those are uh, tax rules for buying and selling stock, stocks and funds. And I have one question that came up for you, for you here, Pete. Uh, what's the best way for a member to find the tax guide online? Sure. So if you if you go to the journal tab on our website, or if you hover over the journal tab, uh, you'll see a link called in, uh, invest investing investor guides. And by clicking on investor guides, you'll see a list of all the guides that we run throughout the year. Um, and, and through that, then then you'll be able to get a link to the tax guide. Thank you. With with that, I'm going to go into our next uh, main benefit here, and that's uh, of the mutual fund data and, and and ETF data. And, you know, we've been covering mutual funds uh, for as long as I've been at the association. Uh, and it used to be an annual guide and uh, a book would come to you as a member every, every year in the mail. Uh, we then go ahead, went ahead and when we went online, started to cover information built through an annual guide that was mailed to you and more recent uh, information, more summary information online. Uh, but now, uh, what we've done is we've partnered up with Morningstar and we've made mutual fund guides and ETF guides and they cover the full universe of funds or ETFs. We've made all those available online for members at no additional cost. 
and they cover the full spectrum. They're updated monthly, and we have information, rate of return information for one, three, five, ten years. Uh, we have uh, risk information, how does the fund compare, um, and and as well as grades. Now, one of the things that you know we found and we've, we've always been really important when it comes to looking at mutual fund performance is that it's really critical that you know the the it's too easy to just chase strong performance but really when it comes to performance analysis it's best done by comparing a fund within the same category so we've created grades a through f grades that how compares a fund against the funds of the same category and if it's a return thing a letter A grade is, 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 is considered good. If it's a risk element, a letter A grade means that the fund has lower risk than most funds in that same category. If it's an expense ratio, an A grade would mean that the fund has a, a lower expense ratio than is typical for that category. So we cover this information. It's available, um, again, monthly. And the best way to access it, uh, if you go to our website, is to click on the Investing Ideas tab. And within the investing ideas tab, we have both the ETF guide and the mutual fund guide. And if you scroll down this page as well, you see some current information as far as performance of, of different categories of funds and how they've done um, at that point in time. And so if you click on in this case, it happens to be these look like ETFs. So this is an ETF guide. Um, and uh, I've selected the US equity subsection of ETFs. And within there, you can go ahead and pick a, 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 in this case, small cap value. And these are probably ranked by one year return. And you can go ahead and, and then analyze these things. And again, you could either uh, go ahead and compare them. There's a comparison tool. You can take a look at a in-depth view of that, comp that particular ETF. You can rank this information. You could download an Excel file. And again, in this case, we have an upgrade of one year month return. That's because this is a, a lower uh, return than most funds in the small value ETF range. Whereas in this case, this fund has an A grade because it's 14.7 rate of return for that particular month was much was in the top 20% uh, of all funds that are small value for that particular comparison. So you can look at this information on both ETFs as well as mutual funds. And again, here at international, on the internet, on the fund side, because loads are, are an important consideration, we have this toggle that lets you look at just the no load funds but if you want to, you can look at all the funds as well. And again, these are the broad categories, the asset categories, and you can go ahead and drill down and pick a more specific category if you so desire. One more tool that I really want to kind of point out sort of as a hidden gem is, and this is available, the compare tool. You can either click on these little X's next to a fund or ETF. You could also go ahead and do a compare ETFs or compare funds tool on the investing ideas tab. But you can go ahead and plop in uh, a couple of funds. Uh, in this case, I'm comparing actually uh, two ETFs and a mutual fund. And it quickly puts them next to each other side by side. You can get a sense for how their rates of return compare, how their risk is comparison, uh, how, their, how their expenses are. And you could then go ahead and either add it to a portfolio with this yellow plus sign or go ahead and research it some more by clicking on the blue link here. That's yeah, sort of my little hidden gem on the fund side. We have a member that's asking a, a great question here. Uh, what's the difference between the AAI mutual fund rating as well and the uh, Morningstar rating? You know, uh, I, I could, the the rating itself was determined internally. Um, I mean, the we're trying to compare a rating within a specific point in time as a put, we don't have a overall rating for funds when it comes to this thing. We're simply taking uh, the funds within a certain category and ranking them from best to worst and breaking them into uh, quintiles. It's something we've really always been doing here for so long, for so long time. Uh, it's been pretty steady over time and uh, it's a fair question, but the, the Morningstar tool is a little bit different as far as how it rates funds. I think it takes two a little bit uh, different time periods into account. Uh, John, this, this member is asking, um, are closed end funds included in the fund listings? Those end funds are exchange traded open uh, funds. They're not, they're not, they don't really fall into either of these categories, so they are not included in here. Okay. And then uh, just, a, just an add on uh, to that are all available uh, mutual funds and ETFs listed in the compare tool? I, I guess what's the, what's the data set? 
they any it should be any publicly traded ETF, and you know I think we cover all thirty thousand uh, funds as well. We 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 use the full uh, Morningstar universe for both ETFs and and open ended mutual funds. And uh, I guess in term in terms of the the um, funds that are covered on the on the guides as well, does that cover the entire universe? Well, when it comes that that's interesting. That's a good question. You know, when it when it comes to the guide itself, it covers all the funds. Now, when we publish uh, a the guide in the journal, you know, we have to go ahead and obviously filter uh, the you know the the thirty thousand fund universe or the two thousand ETF universe down to uh, you know a couple hundred. So when we publish them in the actual print journal itself, we apply a number of filters to either to highlight the most popular largest funds that uh, are, are low cost, no cost, um, and uh, are of interest to our members. Online, you can apply those filters yourself or look at the full universe. Uh, one other question, um, are the fund, the, the, in terms of the grades, um, are, these, are these grades uh, risk adjusted at all? Uh, they are not risk adjusted. Um, they are uh, in effect, just within their base, I I, I wish I'm, I'm drawing a blank as to whether or not I know we publish a risk adjusted rate of return. I'm not sure if that is itself graded. Uh, it's a good question. I don't know offhand on that. And I can answer that. These are not risk adjusted by themselves. All right. With that, I think we can uh, move on to the next segment. With that, we can talk a little bit about community. And, and Pete, why don't you lead that discussion? Well, I think community is, is uh, you know a benefit that is is uh, very unique to us. You know, as an un unbiased educator that promotes evidence-based investing, you know, our focus has been uh, teaching individual investors how to invest and providing the tools and information to do it. But investing doesn't have to be a solitary thing. You know, there are powerful advantages to interacting with other investors, with other perspectives to advance your information and, and education. You know, for every Warren Buffett, there's a Charlie Munger. For every John Bukowski, there's a Pete Wynn. You know, someone, if if nothing else, just to be a sounding board to and allow you to test your thesis and thus grow more confident in what you ultimately commit to doing. So that's why nearly 40 years ago, we created local chapters in various cities across the U.S. And they allow us to reach individual investors in their own communities through regular chapter meetings. These meetings offer expert speakers who provide timely and valuable presentations about investing. And it's also a great opportunity to make friends and learn from other investors. But you know, for the last year in this pandemic, our local chapters um, have had no choice but to to uh, to um, temporarily stop doing in-person meetings, and so they've responded by doing online webinars. Um, they've done an excellent job, and, and they've gotten great uh, rave reviews for their webinars. Um, and you can you can find more about the local chapters by going to the community tab on our website and looking up upcoming meetings for local chapters. But later this summer, we'll also add this kind of information on our homepage. Now, with the positive feedback we've received on webinars, whether done through our local chapters or also the, the, the nationally run webinars that we run, um, this has helped us develop a vision for entering the, the digital age. So we've recently developed online clubs based on topics like stock investing, mutual fund, and ETF investing, income investing, retirement withdrawals. This is just a starting point, but, but we have a, a roadmap to uh, uh, increase the number of clubs that we've got uh, and, and build on that. But you can find these clubs as well on the community page. Um, there's already great conversations conversations happening there, especially with the Income Investing Club, um, which is currently led by a fantastic club expert. And you know, for those comfortable using them, they're, these clubs are currently hosted on external uh, social media platforms. But our plan is to add an online forum for member interaction directly on, on AAI.com later this year. And lastly, I, I, uh, uh, I mentioned that webinars were a big hit and you know a great way to interact with our speakers uh, and, and with us um, is, is through our webinars. Um, but we've also recently launched the Individual Investor Show. So this is a show where we interview guests about investing uh, and we also intend to involve interested members throughout the AI community in a conversation. You know, it's called the Individual Investor Show for a reason. It's run by individual investors for individual investors. So, you know, we encourage you to watch that show every other Wednesday. Uh, Ryan, feel free to make a plug for next week if you'd like. 
Sure, I'll go ahead and uh, turn my camera on this one for, for this one. So, um, yeah, uh, we we put together, uh, you know, a guest to to come on the show. We interview, um, you know, we ask them questions uh, whether they, uh, you know, just to give a little bit more color to uh, journal articles that members get, um, or you know, questions that people have. We we you know, we do take. Uh, you know, member feedback on on the segments, and uh, you know, really want your questions to get answered because that's that's the whole point. We're trying to educate folks on investing. Um, yeah, so that's every other week. Um, next week we have a, an a, additional show. Um, uh, you know, I, I put, host and produce those. Um, you can register for the next one at aii.com/webinars. Um, as well, it that's where also you can register for upcoming webinars. Um, that's also, by the way, where our uh, archive of previous webinars. Uh, lives. Uh, members get access to the whole archive of webinars that we've been doing for uh, just over a year now. Uh, every Wednesday night at 7.30 uh, Central, we uh, do a broadcast just like this one. Um, and yeah, that that's uh, basically the, our pitch on, on webinars as well as the individual investor show. And Ryan, if, if I can special guest next week? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, so, so next week, uh, we are inviting uh, Gaddis and Grayson Rose on. Uh, talk a little bit uh, to highlight an upcoming uh, chapter webinar as being held through our Los Angeles and San Diego chapters. Uh, so that actually encompasses all of the uh, elements that you're, you're talking about in this community slide. Uh, it hits up the individual investor show and the chapters and, and whatnot. Um, as well, we're uh, featuring our own Derek Hageman. Uh, he, there's a segment talking about um, virtuous uh, stocks uh, based on a first cut list that was originally uh, produced in the AI Journal. So that's just a, a preview of the upcoming show. And Ryan, if, if, if I can put you on the spot, um briefly you know you've recently been working very closely with our local chapter leaders if, if you can just kind of share you know their enthusiasm and passion for the association and, and you know and how that uh um kind of is uh, exciting an exciting um new starting point for us as we build our our, our communities sure yeah so um you know uh we have uh, currently uh 34 chapters across the country um you know, you can sign up uh, for, I, I believe you're gonna be showing in the next few slides um, where people can sign up for one in their local area. Um, you know, uh, previously to the pandemic, they were meeting in person. Um, obviously right now it's, uh, pandemic is still ongoing, um, but we look forward to them having in-person meetings, uh, you know, coming coming back. Um, but right now, a lot of them are putting on uh, great webinars. Um, and uh, so you can attend those. We have a, a run, running chapter webinar calendar that you can find on our website. Um, if you'd like more information about our uh, chapters, uh, aaii.com slash chapters, more information about that. Again, they're always recruiting uh, new speakers to, to talk uh, to their folks. And uh, because these are all online webinars, you can um, enjoy them from the comfort of your own home. And before we move on to the next segment, uh, there was a question here that I'll, I'll answer. It's um, from Satish. Uh, and he's asking about um, are all webinars and individual investor shows recorded and made available? Uh, so yes, they are. Um, uh, all attendees, whether you uh, um, or all registrants to our shows, whether you attended or not, are sent an email the next day. But you also can, can get there by going to the community tab, and, and there's a section there where you can go to uh, the AI webinars. Um, and as well, we have a YouTube page that you can find um, uh, if, if you do a search on YouTube for AI. You can find all of our webinars there as well. Yeah, and I, I, hate to, I hate, hate to say the lawyer stuff here, but I'll, I'll let you say that. Occasionally, we'll have uh, a speaker do a webinar, and uh, they they might be from an investment company firm, and there may be restrictions as far as replays are concerned. On occasion, I think like I think this is a perhaps Julie Jason's webinar was not able to be uh, redistributed afterwards. Is that those, yeah, those are the rarity, I, but occasionally that happens. Yeah, we try not to to fall into those kinds of situations, but yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, some of the the outside speakers we do invite, um, you know, have compliance issues that they have to kind of meet in legal stuff. So uh, I think maybe in the, the history of us doing webinars for over a year, maybe two webinars are not available in our archive. But um, yeah, uh, ai.com/webinars. Um, you can find a lot of our great content there. Or as uh, Pete mentioned, um, you can search for our YouTube channel, um, and we post the the recordings of these. Um, uh, broadcasts that we do, as well as the individual investor show, uh, the day after they broadcast. So uh, this, this, in fact, tonight's broadcast will be available tomorrow on our YouTube channel. And uh, since uh, folks have registered, um, you will receive an email, um, both with the link to, to the recording and also the show notes, uh, which do include all the uh, resources and links to the things that we've discussed on the shows. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the other uh, benefits that uh, comes with membership and our, you know, for some, perhaps, you know, email is, is overwhelming, but we publish a number of very uh, interesting email newsletters and based upon 
the open rates we see from our members and based upon the feedback we get from members, uh, they seem to value these things. Uh, we publish three weekly emails. Uh, one is the educated investor. So today is Tuesday. You would have gotten that in your inbox today. And uh, in there, we put a, a, a narrated, curated collection of, of articles that are of interest. They might be from the recent journal. It could be a, a topic that's of, of current based upon what's happening in the economy. But it's to really educate you and to give you some information that's relevant in today's market update. And you know, the other one that's now weekly is the stock ideas update. And I was thinking about that. Actually, that it used to be a monthly newsletter. And last year during the pandemic, uh, we had a we had the, the the market was moving so rapidly up and down. It was presenting a lot of interesting ideas to invest in. And uh, we thought, hey, this would be kind of interesting uh, you know, to present to our members. So we have all these screens we've developed. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and publish an email uh, weekly that highlights perhaps you know, when the market was going down, perhaps something on the more conservative side. As far as screens are concerned, I saw a member ask before. The, he thought he heard that we have a Buffett screen. Actually, we have three different Buffett screens that are based upon uh, works describing how Buffett invests. You know, one uh, the, based on Buffett Hagstrom and two on Buffettology. So we, you know, we, we would publish uh, on a Wednesday, we would go ahead and, you know, give some information as to how the screen was divided and some ideas that come out of it. Uh, so it went from being a monthly newsletter, it just talked about performance to actually giving you actionable ideas every week. And now we kind of spice that up as well as with some uh, perhaps looking at a industry and giving you some uh, stock investor grades on those. That comes out every Wednesday. And then Charles, uh, and he's probably busy drawing things now with his hand, uh, but uh, every every Thursday, uh, I, I again, I, I enjoy reading all of these. One of my favorites here is the investor update that Charles pub publishes every Thursday. Uh, he takes you know one topic that's current and really relates it to us as individuals, why it's important, why we should go ahead and look at it. And on top of that, he gives us a hand drawing uh, that tries to illustrate what he's talking about. So it catches my eye and her, 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 sure catches your eye as well. Uh, on, on top of that, uh, you get a monthly journal update. So anytime we publish the journal, it's made available online. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up to make sure you're alerted to that. And separately, uh, we have, it's typically monthly. You know, I normally do a, a little update on what's been happening with the shadow stock portfolio. Normally on the 15th of the month, we go ahead and release information on the, on the performance of the portfolio, what stocks are currently passing, uh, any kind of news on the stocks in the portfolio, plus any kind of developments that have occurred in the market that are, might be of interest or of note. It, it could be talking about how our need to perhaps change the parameters of the screen because the markets are getting expensive or cheap. So that's normally on a monthly basis, but then also to the extent there's a change made to the portfolio. If, we, if a stock uh, based upon a quarterly review is no longer passing and is removed or sold or an addition is made out, we'll issue a special alert on that. And the way to manage your email preference alerts is to A, go to the, our website, aaii.com, log in, because we have to know who you are, and then go ahead and click on email preferences from the drop down menu just under your name. You'll be taken to what's called a uh, email preference center. And we divide up, I'm showing you the, the, the probably the more upper portion of this email. On the left-hand side are all the various investment newsletters that we talked about, these e-newsletters that you can go ahead and subscribe into. You can even subscribe to get a periodic request to fill out the sentiment survey uh, as far as that is concerned. So this is your opportunity to, to control which emails you get, both that are informational as well as promotional. So if you don't want to get any more information on uh, other products like dividend investing or, or whatever, just go ahead and uncheck those and you'll be just getting the member newsletters that you want to get. The other mention that was made was local chapter emails. And again, if you go to the community section and click on local chapters and do the drop down area, you'll have a link to your local chapter communications. And in there, you can it'll take you to a special part of your account where you could update and manage the My Local Chapter Communications, and you could go ahead and decide which chapters you wanna get emails from. And I think especially with the pandemic, since many of our chapters have been doing webinars, you know, Los Angeles, for example, 
you know, if you want to go ahead and get on their mailing list, email list, or when they do a webinar, you can go ahead and sign up for that. And an email will be sent to you, giving you the opportunity to go ahead and sign up for those emails. Uh, John, we did have a question come in. Um, I thought it was an interesting one that folks should be aware of. Um, the, the, Kevin writes in and asks um, that they have a little bit of difficulty uh, tracking down all the weekly and monthly articles that AI uh, publishes. Uh, is there a, a, perhaps an easy way to find out uh, what the latest uh, content is from AII? And if so, how? Yeah, I mean, in Pika Analyst as well, uh, we do have a, a latest tab uh, on our website. And let me see if I have any navigation. Here we go. This is latest tab next to my AII which should give you kind of a, a reference to what we've just recently published or made available online. Thank you. I think that was uh, helpful for, for most folks. And that, that might be kind of a, a nice segue into the, the next section, the, the coming soon, my library. This might, this might not be answering uh, Kevin's question directly, but you know, I was um, listening about the part where he says that you know, he finds it hard to track down all of our weekly and monthly articles. You know, bookmarking capability is becoming more important because, um, you know, we have overflowing news feeds. In our busy lives, it's always difficult to find time and read every single article that you want to read or quickly access an article that you learned something valuable about, something valuable about at the time that you want to access again in the future. So we created My Library. It's a new feature that is under development but is due to be released early this summer. And it's going to give you the confidence to be, the, I'm sorry, it's going to give you the convenience to be able to uh, click on, on an article, click save on an article, add it to a collection of articles that you can organize in any which way that you desire. You'll also be able to save videos as well. Currently our videos link directly to YouTube. Uh, and so there's this, this inconvenience of leaving our website when you're, when you're um, going to a video um, on our webinars tab. But you're gonna be able to save videos as well and have um, and, and, and easily interact with them. So my library is going to be accessible on the homepage, as well as the top right corner of the website while you're logged in. Um, you would simply click on, on your name uh, on the top right. But you know, the most exciting thing about having this tool is that it's gonna allow us to personalize and customize your experience. You know, we'll only get better and better at it as, as the website evolves. But by saving articles, we'll then in the future have a better idea of the types of content that you like, and then can give you more of that content. So uh, where, where that will lead us is that we can send, uh, we can create suggested content, we can do uh, email alerts, uh, things like that. Um, but I, I think it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of giving members a convenient access and, and great content. That's very helpful. Uh, I really, uh, I'm looking forward to saving. I think the, you know, I, I always find myself uh, using the search bar or search part of our website to go ahead and find an article that is of interest. Right? I remember reading and I'm trying to figure out how to apply it today, but the ability to really go ahead and favorite that stuff and save it and make a, article, a library, I think is really going to be uh, important for me. And I'm guessing it'll be important for a lot of members as well. Uh, this question came in and I think it was probably a, a good kind of wrap up question. Um, you know, uh, I, the question was, you know, how, you know, how do I, you know, use all these tools to improve my financial literacy and um you know i, I think that's a, a a broad question but you know generally speaking I, I i think we we put out these tools and we develop all these tools and resources uh for folks uh to do exactly that um to educate you to to better be uh manage your own portfolio assets you know we, we truly believe that um you know individual investors are are their own their own best advocates and uh, that's why we we do what we do um this these suite of features that we we offer as member benefits uh really really do uh you know educate people and uh you know that's that's why we do all this stuff it uh hopefully answers a lot of your questions and um you know helps you become more financially literate and hopefully helps you become wealthier i agree that was a a great synopsis of really what our our mission is and uh, you know um we're we're educators at heart and our, our focus is really the individual investor and trying to understand uh, what our needs as individual investors are. And we do our best to provide, you know, the, not only the education, but the tools and the research that really we all need to, to reach our long-term, you know, our goal. And, uh, you know, no one's gonna follow your portfolio as carefully as you will, uh, but you need to be armed. 
And you know, I think we all believe that with the right tools and the time uh, to devote to it, we could do, you know, we, we the individual is more than well equipped to uh, reach their financial uh, dreams and, and sleep comfortably at night. Um, and then this last question comes in from Cynthia. Um, you know, we're, we're all very uh, preoccupied with the future and uh, particularly uh, when it comes to financial planning for our children and um, our descendants. And uh, so they're wondering if uh, AI has any uh, information to folks uh, new, new to investing, financial planning, uh, you know, perhaps teaching children about financial management. Uh, I know we published content on this on this front. Yeah, you know, if, if there's one book that you could download from our website uh, or, or pamphlet, it's the Lifetime Strategies Guide. And uh, if it's 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 you know, I, I it, it's the it's the one more hidden gem. Uh, you know, part of it is expire is 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 perhaps inspiration for the wealth building process, but really the um, Lifetime Strategies Guide. Uh, is a a good overview uh, that uh, someone new to investing can read to gain an understanding of the importance of strategy, uh, the different risks of the stock market versus the bond market, uh, how to go ahead and get started, you know, and how one can start with simply using index funds, uh, and the importance of asset allocation. So really, if there's one thing that you can get on our website, and it's under the guides, I'm pretty sure of that or um, that you can go ahead and, uh, and get someone started that's in that. Uh, separately, and you know, we're always trying to expand their offerings, uh, we are working on, on creating a, a new uh, blog um, for, uh, for younger and newer investors. That's not out yet quite yet, that's in the formation stages, but these are all things that we're hoping to launch before uh, in, the near, in the near term future. All right. Um, well, I don't want to put you two on the spot, but um, I guess I just to kind of wrap this up. Um, what is probably the, the your favorite member benefit, uh, if you had to pick one? I'll let Pico first. Uh, I'll take my. I'll I'll, I'll I'll punt that one for a moment. <laughs> you you got to go with my portfolio. Uh, it's it's something that that as an investor, how can you not look at it um, frequently? It's 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 uh, it's so important. It covers so much ground in terms of our content. Uh, and it, it's, uh, it's, it really is, I, I used the word earlier, the center of the universe, but it's, it's kind of where things start there. Yeah, probably for me, it'd be more of the stock screens. Um, I think uh, for me, the fact that we've got a, a wide variety of screens that cover just about any possible investor interest, I guess that's perhaps our biggest issue is that we have so many styles. But I really uh, get so much out of reading about what a, a how a famous investor uh, goes about and makes their investment decisions. You know what principles come in play. I mean, uh, you know, we all learn the importance. You know, okay, you know, the important how important is growth in the investing equation? How important is value? And why are these rules used? And how can they be used? To actually build a portfolio. So for me, it's the stock screens. It's getting the ideas, but it's more than just the list of stocks that pass. It's the information behind why those particular factors are important to use. I'll, and I'll uh, go ahead and turn the question on myself. Um, and this is maybe a little bit self-serving, but um, I, I really do like our community area. Um, you know, it, it. First of all, I I I'm the staff person who works with all these areas, so of course I'm going to say that. But um, I, I truly do think our uh, our you know burgeoning investing community, um, as well as our local chapter programs, um, as well as our, our our webinars that we do, um, are, are really a, a chance for you to kind of interact with with a lot of our uh, speakers and content creators, uh, and as well as you know uh, you know a lot of other uh, financial industry. Uh, organizations are getting into uh, the financial education game and, uh, but uh, the challenge is that you you know you get a lot of marketing speak or uh, you don't really get a chance to interact with the speakers or ask questions that may may help your investing knowledge and with AAI that's simply not the case um, you know with us it's, it's really a chance for for you to to ask questions that, that may be germane to, to what you're learning about what you're learning to learn to invest in um, and, and so I, I think the the interactive element is, is really a, a great part of of being a part of the association and at really truly a, a great member benefit. I agree. So you know, helping each other become better. Absolutely. 
Uh, well, with that, any any final thoughts to kind of close out our broadcast tonight? Well, I just you know I my I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, I mean it's it's you know we're doing this uh, in partnership with our members, and uh, you know we we welcome the feedback. I know Pete said it's a continuing improvement process, but uh, it's it's been it, it it's fun to be involved with our members, and it's fun to be involved uh, with the ever changing um, technology that really helps make investing uh, more powerful and more useful for our members. And no matter what, the guiding principles are the same, but our ability to apply them is made uh, made better with the various tools that are out there. Yeah, and I, I want to add to that. You know, you know, please tell us how we can be better, how we can make the better, uh, make the website uh, meet your your needs. Uh, so we love that feedback. We use that to uh, analyze and and uh, prioritize what we work on next for you. So this is all for you. We, we appreciate it. Uh, John, thanks for the invite. Um, I hope I can do it again. I, I really enjoyed uh, um, working with you tonight. Um, you too, you too, Ryan. Absolutely. Thank well, you. with that, pleasure. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, with that, we wish you good health and good wealth. Good night. Good night.